Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today we're going to do something that will accompany one of our previous tutorials, creating the colorful bunch of balloons very well, and that is creating soft fuzzy clouds. So like you can see on the screenshot that I have up, these are very simple clouds that are kind of a good mix of cartoony and realism and could definitely be pushed either way with a little bit of work. And this is something that initially or originally would have been very difficult to create. Uh, Kernan Dillon did an excellent tutorial a while back on creating non-realistic cumulus clouds with some clever uh, mesh layers and compositing tricks. Well, that's also a very good technique, but since that tutorial's come out, there have been some more developments, and thanks to an excellent developer who developed an add-on, this is now actually very easy to do within Blender. So let's just pop right over to Blender. And the add-on that we're going to be looking for, if we just bring up our user preferences from the file menu, is the uh, it's underneath the object category, and it's this object cloud generator done by Nick Keeling. So our thanks go out to him, but allows us to very easily create volumetric clouds. Now this ships with Blender 2.55 in the SVN, so let's just check this, and that'll enable it, and we can just go ahead and close our user preferences. Now what you'll see down on the uh, toolbar on the left side is a cloud generator. The way that this is going to work is we're basically just going to take our, our cube and generate our cloud from it, which what that does behind the scenes, as I'll show you in just a second, is creates a particle system, creates the volumetric materials, and does all that uh, behind the scenes so that we don't have to worry about it. So. Before we go any further, let's just go ahead and take a look and see what happens. If we just click Generate Clouds without doing anything, you'll immediately see that we have this Cloud cloud Bounds, which is our bounding box. We then have another mesh inside that, which is the definition object. And then we have a point cloud in here, so it's just a whole bunch of single vertices. And then we have a single object called the Cloud Mesh. And if we take a look at the outliner, you'll see that some of these uh, should be set to not render, I believe. Yep, here we go. So the cloud mesh, the cloud points, and the definition object, none of them render. And the only thing that renders is, in fact, the cloud bounds. Well, let's go ahead and see what that looks like if we just render this right now by hitting F12. Let's see what it looks like. Now, this may take just a second to render. Uh, you'll notice that it's pre-caching the volume up here. And what this means is that it's basically caching the volumetric material. If we jump back over to the preview that I showed here, you'll notice that this isn't actually, or well, at least it doesn't look like, an actual mesh. It is, in fact, a volumetric material, so it has actual volume within the cloud and allows us to create something that's much more realistic. Going back to Blender, since it's now done, you'll see exactly what we have. With no work whatsoever, we have a very cool little cloud ball, basically. But let's take a look at a little more of how this actually works. If we jump over to the materials, you'll notice that we now have a cloud material assigned to our cloud bounds. Now, the preview doesn't really work very well for volumetrics, and in this case, we can't really see it, but you'll notice it's gone ahead and set the type to volume, so render as a volumetric object, and then we have all of our various settings such as density, density scale, scattering, and so on. All of them have already been set to give us this result. Now, that's actually not completely true because they're also combined with several textures. One is actual an actual cloud texture using the hard noise, and then also affecting the emission color, and then we also have a cloud point density, which points to our, our cloud points and some other settings that allows us to actually render the volumetric material. So all of this may seem really confusing as to what it is. In fact, I don't, ha I don't have any idea what some of it is. And this is the advantage to the cloud generator, because the cloud generator actually doesn't do anything except just create all the settings for you. It's not actually creating something that you can't just already do in Blender. You could go ahead and set this up exactly like this and get the same kind of result. The, the point is, is that setting up all these different settings within the materials can be quite confusing if you're just starting out. So this is where the advantage of the cloud generator comes in as it just allows us to create the shapes that we want and then automatically generate the clouds from that. 
So ignoring all the materials for the time being, that's for another day's tutorial. Uh, let's go ahead and just accept that our cloud material is good and we won't worry about uh, modifying any of that. And let's just take another look at how we can expand the cloud generator to get the effect that we want. So hit an escape there to leave my render view. You'll notice that I just have my single cloud. Well, maybe I want to go ahead and create a cloud landscape, or I want to create a series of clouds. Well, at this point, there's a very handy tool built into the cloud generator that rather than just deleting everything, we can just click degenerate. And that will give us back our original shape for our mesh. And what we can do now is let's just first, let's go ahead and set up a nice environment. So let's select our camera, and I'm just going to hit Alt-R, which will reset the, whoops. Okay, uh, it would seem that I had a conflict with another application that I had running, but what I was attempting to do was just hit Alt-R and Alt-G, which will reset the rotation of the camera and reset the location to bring it right back to the origin point facing straight down. The reason that I do this is then I can just very easily hit R to rotate, X to constrain to the X axis, and then just type in 90 on my number pad and hit enter. And now you'll notice that the camera is just pointing straight along the Y axis. And then I can just go ahead and grabbing my widget here by just left clicking on it, I can just move it back along the Y axis. And then if I just hit zero, I can go ahead and go to camera view. Well, let's do one more thing, or a couple more things actually. Let's first just go into top view. And I'm going to select my light here, and let's just change it over to a sunlight. And since we're using or we're rendering clouds, it'd be nice to go ahead and get a nice sunlight environment or sunlight environment with the sky and everything behind it. So let's go ahead and enable the sky setting on the lamp. And then let's just rotate our lamp around about like this and position it on the left side of our cube to give us about a midday sun, something about like that. So that'll be about 12 o'clock noon. And if we hit F12 to render that, we can kind of see what our sky is looking like. Maybe that's a little too blue, so maybe we'll just rotate it down a little bit more. Hit F12 again. Or we can just kind of play with the rotation to see what we think of it. So I'm going to maybe do this, maybe raise it up a bit. And there we go. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. But let's also maybe just go ahead and maybe rotate it back like this. And that should be just about right. Okay, so now we get a nice transition in our sky. Uh, well, let's do one more thing, and let's just regenerate our cloud real quick, quick by just selecting this and click Generate Cloud, just so that we can see what it looks like with our sun environment. And now this will start to take a little bit longer to render, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape to cancel this. And let's just go into our render settings. Let's change this down to 848 by 348. And we'll go ahead and leave it at 50% the full size. Now we can render this at a more reasonable size for our final result. And we'll let this go. And here you can see our final result. So things start to look really cool. But, you know, right now we only have basically a cloud ball. We want to get more of a wall cloud or something like that. So let's hit escape to leave our render view. Let's go ahead and degenerate our cloud. And let's hit tab to go into edit mode. And what we're going to do is from the camera view, let's just move this cloud along the x-axis by hitting G and then X to lock it to the x-axis. We'll just maybe move it over a little bit. Let's move it up. We'll go into front view. We'll just move it up so it's even with the x-axis. So this way we'll just consider the bottom of our clouds to be about there. And let's go ahead and then just duplicate this cloud. And by hitting shift D and then moving it over, and then we'll just kind of rotate some of these, move them around, shift D again, hit Y to lock to the Y axis, move it over. Maybe I'll hit S and then shift Z to exclude the Z axis. And I'll rotate around like this or scale it up. And then I'll hit R and Z to rotate around the Z axis only. Maybe move it over along the Y axis by hitting G and Y. And what you can do before I go any further, let's just go and hit tab to leave edit mode and click generate cloud. And what you'll notice is that it creates a new cloud for each, each individual enclosed mesh within our object. And so this allows us to create the, the basic cloud forms quite easily. So looking at this, do you, just using Shift D scaling, constraining to axes, we can go ahead and scale this 
or duplicate and scale these clouds, rotate them around until we get a, a basic shape that we like. So I'm just going to create a couple of these. Okay, maybe we'll go ahead and let's just select all these. We'll go ahead and duplicate them. We'll move them over like this. Maybe we'll select this one, which we can just select an entire one by hovering over it and then hitting L. We'll duplicate that, move it over, rotate it a little bit. Maybe take this little cloud again by just hitting L, move it along the Y axis by hitting G and then X, along the X axis by G and X. And maybe let's go ahead and pull our camera out and we can kind of move it up. Maybe we'll go ahead and select all these. Let's just take these, we'll hit Shift D, rotate around the Z axis by hitting R and Z. And let's just kind of bring them around like this. Maybe then we can go ahead and select some of these. We'll hit X, delete those ones. Um, we can delete, or we'll go ahead and leave that one in there. Maybe we'll bring this one out just a little bit. And so we're just creating, you know, any kind of shape that we think might look pretty good. And maybe we'll go ahead and select this one and scale it up along the Z axis by hitting G, uh, S and then Z. Move it up with G and Z. And let's go and select this now in object mode and just click generate cloud and see how this looks. If we hit F12, we can go ahead and render that. And having hit generate cloud, it applies all the materials, uh, does all the work for us. And we can start to see kind of what we get. We get all these really nice kind of cloud shapes based on our actual meshes. So using the mesh, we can kind of generate the shapes that we want. And looking at this, maybe we want to, let's just go in, let's, we want to select the major bounding box, click degenerate, and then we can go in here. Maybe we'll select, say, these three. Let's maybe go ahead and scale them up. But we want to exclude the Z axis, so we'll hit Shift Z. Scale them up like this. Maybe then we'll hover over this one, move it over. Grab the little one here, move it over. And we can really just start to kind of create the basic shapes that we want. I'll select that one, Shift D to duplicate it, bring it down. Maybe we'll select our camera and we can go and hit period to rotate around the 3D cursor. And then we'll just maybe rotate around, maybe something like, like this. Maybe we'll go ahead and rotate down. If we double tap R, we can go into trackball rotation where we can just rotate around like this. And we can just kind of rotate down until we get a nice angle that maybe we like. Something kind of like that as if we're looking up at the clouds almost. And then we can, let's maybe go into edit mode and let's just using hit B to select bring up our box select, let's just left click and drag over all of this while in wireframe mode, which again is Z, and we'll just pull those over along the X axis, maybe about like that. Let's hit F12 to render these. Oh, and of course we forgot to actually um, select our, or to actually generate our clouds, so we'll do that. And then we can hit F12 again to render. Now you can start to see we're getting some some pretty cool cloud shapes in here. Uh, we can play with these any way that we want. Uh, maybe we'll go ahead. This looks a little thick right in here. This one looks a little uh, wimpy right through there. So let's go ahead and degenerate this. And then what we'll do is let's just first we'll select this entire form. We're going to hit Shift D, take it up along the Z axis. We'll hit comma to rotate around the individual center. Then hit R and Z. Rotate it around, move it over like this. Try and just add in another level to it. Maybe pull it back a little bit along the Y axis to add a bit more depth. Um, this looks, let's go ahead and bring these ones down a little. So I'll just select these. I'm gonna hit period to scale towards the cursor. This way we can just flatten them out and we'll hit S and Z. Bring those down. Let's select this one. We'll give it a little more depth. So again, that's just S and Z to scale along the Z axis. We'll maybe do the same thing with these ones here, just so we can see them through there. We'll take this one and maybe we'll just go ahead and bring it over like this, maybe scale down. And then let's go ahead and we'll just select all this. We're gonna shift D, hit comma to rotate around the individual center, rotate it around like this. 
I'm going to pull it back along the y-axis a good bit. Just kind of position them back where we think it'll look pretty good. Maybe we'll go ahead and deselect these ones by hitting B, middle click and drag to deselect those. Same thing right there and right there. Then we can pull these down, rotate them around so it doesn't look like a duplicate. And then let's go ahead and generate clouds again. We'll save our file and let's go ahead and render this. Okay, with our render done, we can start to see that maybe this is looking a bit, um, a bit like cotton balls right now. And so let's go ahead and es hit escape. We'll go ahead and degenerate this. And let's do a couple things. First off, let's get rid of this little one here. We'll just delete that. And I think right now, one of the problems that we're facing is that we've got too many objects in here to make it look too solid. So let's just erase a few of these uh, that we have going in and out. We'll maybe bring some of them out along the individual axes more. Maybe pull that one back there. Um, I think we've just got too many objects that it's appearing a little bit too solid. So if we just start kind of removing some of these, we can start to get a little bit more uh, sparsity within our clouds. And maybe we'll just go ahead and get rid of these ones entirely. And the back ones really didn't work out very well, so we're going to go ahead and remove those as well. Um, and then let's select these, and we're just going to hit S and Shift Z, scale them up along the Z axis. Let's also maybe go ahead and bring our cursor back up just a little bit. Um, I just hit period, and I'm going to hit R and double tap X, which will rotate around the local X axis of the cursor. Allow me just to bring this up. And go down through here and maybe about like that and now let's go ahead and generate this again and see what it looks like okay and now we'll render that see if we get a little bit better result and I think maybe we are yeah they're not quite so thick so you see kind of our tendrils coming out through here but now is a good time to go ahead and we can see this looking a little bit better Let's go ahead and hit escape and let's play with a couple more settings. First, let's degenerate this. Then you'll notice on our clouds, we have two more settings. One is to create particles and we're going to go ahead and do that. And what that does is creates a particle system rather than the point cloud system for the, um, for the clouds themselves. And this will allow us to use the particle system if we want to kind of expand the clouds a little bit. Then we can also change the type of the clouds over from stratus to cumulus to cirrus. In this case, I'm going to choose cumulus. And let's also maybe, looking at this, let's just take this one in right here. Let's just take it back along the x-axis just a little bit. Um, and let's also take this one down along the z-axis there. So there we go. Now we'll go ahead. Uh, we need to first generate our clouds. And now you'll notice since we use the particle system, if we look at this now, we can go to the particles and we can see all of our settings here. So it's already set it up such that if, even if we hit Alt A, the particles don't move. And that's mostly because of this start and end are both set to zero. So they have indefinite life. And if we render this now, we can just, and one of the advantages using the particle system is we can decrease the amount of particles or increase the amount any way that we want uh, to increase to affect the overall density of the clouds. So if they look a little bit too, too thick, then we can do that. Uh, you also notice with the cumulus clouds, we get at least without adjusting the settings, we get a much more cloud like effect rather than the cotton ball effect. So these start to look really cool here. And in fact, we'll probably go ahead and leave this about like they are, but we want to play with the sky settings just a little bit more. And actually, this looks pretty darn good, except maybe over here. Maybe I'd like to get one more high cloud right in here. So let's go ahead and we'll degenerate this. Let's select this box right back here. And remember, we're still set to rotate around the cursor, as noted by the widget being centered at the cursor rather than the center of the selection. Let's hit S and Z. We'll just pull that way up like that. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to grab my sky here and let's just go over to the settings and let's change over the preset to a mountain preset. 
Um, or actually, no, let's do a... Let's try the desert. And then we'll go ahead and generate the cloud again. And then we will render it. Okay, on the render, you will notice that the sky is maybe a bit too too much teal in it. Um, the clouds good are good, except for this little hole right in here. So we're going to degenerate one more time. And let's just select this one here. And we're just going to hit um, S and Z. Scale up along the Z axis. And then let's left click and then hit comma to scale along the individual center. And then hit S and shift Z to exclude the Z axis. And just bring that up, which will fill that hole nicely. Next, let's go ahead and grab the lamp. And let's just go ahead and rotate it around just a little bit. We'll pull it down. And let's also change the type over to a classic. And I think that will give us a nicer blue in this guy. So we'll select this. We'll generate our clouds again. And then render one last time. And hopefully this looks pretty good. Okay, and as it's rendering here, we can see that maybe there's a little too much just solid blue. Maybe we would like a little bit more of a gradient. So I'm going to do one more thing. Uh, and that is to go ahead and change the sky. Let's change it over to perhaps a desert setting. And of course, you can play with any one of the actual settings within the sky if you want to adjust it a little more accurately or if you know how to adjust the settings in order to get the effect that you want. I generally just leave it on the default and then we'll tweak a few settings here and there uh, as I see fit. But normally the defaults will work out pretty well. And so we can see that the, the desert clouds is starting to look pretty good right in here. So we'll just let this finish. And there we go. There is our finished cloud result. This could, of course, be tweaked any more that you want. Uh, any way that you wanted to go ahead and add more clouds, less clouds, anything in there to get to your final effect. But there's the basics of using the, the cloud generator and some sky settings within Blender without having to worry about the materials, the point densities, or anything like that. Uh, we'll save those for another day, but definitely maybe cover them at some point. But for the time being, uh, enjoy making some clouds.